an army of pharmacists, uh, physicists and uh, paramedics. That is what's been promised by NHS England and what is described as the biggest shake-up of GP surgeries in 15 years. The government says the aim is to take the pressure off doctors, but just how realistic is that? Well, we're joined now by the Director of Primary Care in NHS England, Dr Nikki Kanani, and GP Dr Fari Ahmed. Good morning. Um, Good Nikki, morning. let's start with you first. So what does this actually actually entail then? Um, where's the money? It's part of this 20 billion um, amount that was announced by the government for the NHS. How much is going to be allocated and what is the allocation of extra people that are going to, going to apparently ease the pressure in GP surgeries, particularly on GPs? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we marked a really significant event at the beginning of this year when we published the NHS long-term plan. So on the 7th of January, we said we're going to invest extra money in the NHS. We're all committed to the NHS and it's a really important part of all of our lives, whether we're professionals working in the NHS, patients receiving care. And um, I spent the weekend with my grandmother in hospital and so, you know, really committed to getting the service right. But we also know that our practices are struggling to provide the care that they need to. They're struggling because of workforce pressures, because of workload pressures. So when we published a long-term plan, we set out a commitment to invest an additional £4.5 billion by the end of 23-24 per year in order to support primary medical services, so that's general practice services, and the wider community. Okay. Out of that, we've published um, a document today, later today, which will set out a specific amounts for both general practice and for general practice to work as part of networks to deliver care for our patients. Can you tell me that specific amount? So it's four out of £4.5 billion that we've committed to as part of the allocation for primary medical services, we have committed to an extra £1 billion per year um, by the end of 23-24 for general practice services and 1.8 billion on top of that by the end of 23-24 per year for what is a network contract. So that's asking practices to work together in order to share some of the load and share some okay. of the pressures. In basic terms, sorry for interrupting, as you know, that's time right. is always tight. What does that amount to? It. What does that equal to in numbers of numbers of people? Number and okay. who are they? Numbers of GPs, so, physiotherapists, paramedics, etc. So in, in the core contract, that will commit us to continue to push towards our 5,000 GP target because actually we will always need general practice, GP practitioners and our wider staff within practices. That's then committing us to 20,000 more staff within networks across the country. So that is clinical pharmacists, social prescribing link workers, paramedics, physicians associates and physio physiotherapists to make sure that we provide the support that we need to traditional general practice and allow our patients to get the care they need when they need it as well. Uh, Dr Ahmed, you're listening to some of this with us. So you have a, a GP's practice. There yeah. are five, five doctors, five yeah. GPs in the practice. Now, people listening to this might be thinking, well, this sounds good. When I go and see you at my doctor's surgery, there's something different. Uh, something different is going to be there. More people, more staff. Yeah. Is that right? Um, so it, it does sound good. Um, and I think the issue is we don't have enough GPs. It takes a while to train GPs. So we're lagging behind. We're losing GPs. We're not looking after the ones we've got. So we need, so there's a gap. So if this, I think this, where well, you see other people, if this is like a, you know, like a sticking plaster or a short term solution until we get our numbers up, fine. I think where I would struggle is like, you know, if I, somebody called reception, and they said, look, I need to see somebody. And they say, well, it's three weeks to see a GP or you can see um, a chemist today you know and I don't know how I think some patients might be okay the vast majority I'm sure would struggle with that a little because the reason some people come and see their GPs they've spoken to their pharmacists they've had a look on NHS one you know they, they have an idea of what kind of help they need can you just help me with uh, and some of the clarity on this the money that we were trying to get to the bottom of a moment ago uh, your surgery I mean how does this work are you expecting someone to give you, I don't know, how much does it cost to hire a, a, a fully qualified physio? I don't know, let's call it £40,000 a year. Yeah. 
someone going to give you the money to hire the person? Uh, or, or how does this work? So, so that, that detail would be interesting. I think it would be you interesting know. to see. Not yet. I think it would be interesting to see how it's all panning out. I mean, a lot of practices do have physios. A lot of practices do have pharmacists. But this you know, is about and they, increasing that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and so we're already working to have these people uh, helping us. So I think some of this is trying to look at the pressures that GPs are under. Um, and I think they're asking us to work in groups. So, um, you know, it might work in like cities where GP surgeries are concentrated and you're looking after similar populations. In rural areas, semi-rural areas, it's harder to do. I'm not sure the evidence is there that this will make a big difference to how we work. Everybody's understretched, so if you stick all the understretched people in a big group, does that mean that now they'll have more time and more resources? So I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad there's an acknowledgement that GPs do a lot of this work and that we're going to fund them better. But I think it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. I'm not sure this is going to be directly where we need to go. Maybe it's the first step, but I think we need more GPs and that's what this isn't really uh, Nikki, you're hearing there what Dr. Fari Ahmed um, is saying. And Dr. Ahmed is a regular um, commentator on this program. Um, mm -hmm. We talk to her very often to hopefully get a view of how lots of GPs are feeling across the country. What I'm hearing is that it's not clear that the GPs aren't getting the message yet of what, this, what is being proposed. So I suppose when will it be clear how they're going to be funded to pay for these ambitious plans mm -hmm. and where and how that's expected to be allocated in those surgeries by those surgeries. So we, we aim to publish a full document today after we ratify it at the NHS England board meeting. So by 1pm today, I'm already in contact with lots of GPs who are asking the same questions. And I think Farry makes a really good point. On Tuesday, I was in surgery. I spent 40 minutes with a man who was crying because he just can't look after his mum anymore. We need to make sure that we get the right teams around people when they need them. But we do need GPs as well. So we've got the highest number of new recruits into GP training this year, the highest we've ever had but it does take time to train them. So while we do that, let's build up the primary care team so that the patients get the care they need, but you can still see your GP when you need to, and that's really important. We need to support general practice so that yeah. it can deliver the care it needs but to. But who, who's allocate, who, ha, when are they getting the money? How much money will, will they be getting? Mm -hmm. And is that going to pay, I don't know, for three extra members of staff? Can you, is that guaranteed? Okay. So the money will be coming from the 1st of April and it is a five-year funding settlement for general practice so that we can provide clarity and certainty and that money will come direct to practices as a practice level entitlement um, both uh, in order to support the practice in its core sense doing the core activities that it does and money to support practices working as part of a network so it will go to practices in order to employ the staff that it needs and we will give the practices all the support and tools they need to do that but we, you know this will come over the next year Year and over the next five years and we're absolutely committed to making this a reality for general practice and for our patients. Nikki Kanani, uh, Director of Primary Care for NHS England and Dr Fari Ahmed, good to see you again. Probably Thank best you. we, I know you have more to say but we may catch up again when some of this is kicked exactly. in and we'll see how it works in practice. Yeah, makes sense. I think that would be good. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see, time now is 19 minutes past seven. It's time to talk to Carol. Very important to listen to Carol this morning. Always important to listen to Carol, of course. But today it has been very cold overnight and there are travel problems as well. Carol, morning.